In the mountains of Saragari, in 1897, 21 Sikh soldiers manned a small signalling post between Fort Gulliston and Fort Lockhart. On a dry September day, the signalman was performing his normal duties, relaying messages between the two forts, until he notices a swarm of people moving towards them on the horizon. The signalman uses a small hand-cranked mirror to send Morse code to Fort Lockhart, asking about this swarm of people. Fort Lockhart signals back that they counted at least 10,000 Afghan enemy tribes. The Saragari signaling post was only designed to relay messages between two forts, which is why it was just the size of a basketball court and manned by only 21 men. There was no way that these 21 soldiers could take on 10,000 men on their own. The other soldiers began boarding up the entrances and locking in to their defensive positions. The Afghan rebels were charging full speed ahead towards Fort Lockhart and the only thing standing in their way was this tiny signalling post. The signalman, now worried for his life, sends a message to Fort Lockhart. Can you send help? Fort Lockhart signals back, no. They simply won't get there in time. The 21 men, now stranded with no help, had two options. Surrender and live or fight and die. But if they fight, they buy Fort Lockhart valuable time to build up its defences and face the attackers. Knowing full well the sacrifice they were making and knowing full well they faced almost certain death, they chose to fight. The men get into position and wait. Soon they hear gunfire and a horde of men descend on the outer walls. The Sikh men manage to defeat the first wave of rushing troops, but then comes the second, and then the third, and they endure this for hours until the signal man, still relaying messages to Fort Lockhart, receives a terrifying message. Some of the Afghan tribesmen have breached the outer wall of the signalling post when they weren't looking, and now the Sikh were facing off in hand-to-hand -hand combat with swords and bayonets, blood spilling on the floor, and dozens of Afghan men falling. But for every dozen Afghan men that die, another Sikh also dies. The Sikhs begin their retreat into the relative safety of the inner walls, but in order for them to open the entrance, they need to clear the area so no rebels can sneak in behind them. So the commander, Isha Singh, lets out his last ever war cry and charges directly into the aggressive mob, swinging his sword in a valiant effort to protect his soldiers. The plan works, and the last remaining handful of Sikh men retreat into the inner walls, but the commander is dead. As the men sat within the inner walls, while the sound of axes and rifle butts hammered against the entrance, they all knew it was hopeless. They all knew this was their last day on earth. Soon the defences blew open and the last remaining soldiers were overwhelmed and killed. The last man standing alone in his signal room, the signal man, sent his last message requesting to take up his rifle. Once permission was granted, he fixed his bayonet to his rifle and approached the door of his room. The men of Fort Lockhart could only watch as the signal man approaches his door and kills one tribesman and then another and then 18 more. For a moment, this one man was holding off an entire army of thousands of Afghan tribesmen just with his rifle and bayonet until one of the tribesmen set fire to the signal room. The signal man yells a Sikh battle cry as he's being burnt alive in his signal room. Jo boni soni hal sat sri akal, or whoever utters this phrase shall be fulfilled God is the eternal truth. This guy was an absolute unit and they made him speak Morse code throughout the whole thing. They probably would have won if they just let him fight to begin with. The signalling post had fallen, but the battle had bought the men at Fort Lockhart the time they needed to mount a defence and drive the rebels back. When the men at Fort Lockhart reclaimed the signalling post, they found that the bodies of the 21 Sikhs lay alongside the bodies of over six hundred tribesmen. This is even more impressive when you know Lanchester's laws. If you take Army X of size 10,000 and Army Y of size 5,000, Army X outnumbers Y in the ratio 2 to 1. If you let each soldier fire a bullet at the same time and each bullet has a 10% chance of hitting the enemy, Army X fires 10,000 bullets, but only 1,000 actually hit the enemy. Army Y fires 5,000 bullets, but only 500 hit an enemy in Army X. So Army Y now has a population of 4,000. Army X now only has a population of 9,500. And if you let this happen again, now Army X outnumbers Army Y in the ratio 2.4 to 1. If you let this happen again, Army X outnumbers Y in the ratio 3 to 1. 
Army X now has 9,100, and Army Y now has 3,050. So now Army X outnumbers Army Y in the ratio of 3 to 1. If you let this happen again, then it will be 4 to 1, and eventually Army Y will be completely annihilated. It's clear that when your army is outnumbered, it's a losing battle because as time goes on, the ratio is only going to get worse and worse until all your men are dead. This is known as Lanchester's linear law, but the Saragaris were outnumbered 500 to 1. How on earth did they not get completely annihilated in the first hour? The Saragaris did have quite a few mathematical advantages over the Afghans. One of them being that the terrain was quite difficult to walk through, so not all 10,000 tribesmen could attack the signal post at once, only a handful at a time. If you take Army X with 21 men and Army Y with 10 men, and you allow each of them to shoot each other with a 10% chance that the bullet hits, eventually Army X will defeat all 10 men with 18 left. Then, if you do it again with another 10 men, and then another 10 men, Army X will have 6 men left, but they just killed 30 men. So dividing your forces like this was a bad move for the Afghan. I think we better split up, gang. Daphne and oh, I will- Oh, hell no. Velma, shut your frumpy ass! We also know from Lanchester's linear laws that the rate at which an army dies is proportional to the size of the opposing army and vice versa. If you take the top equation and divide it by the bottom and then multiply to get rid of all denominators and then you integrate both sides, you get that the difference between army X squared and army Y squared remains constant. So the power of each army is proportional to the size of that army squared. So the power of 21 men is 21 squared, which is 441. But the power of three groups of 10 men is only 300. This is known as Lanchester's square law, and it proves that one big group is a lot more powerful than many small groups. Or in other words, Apes together. Strong. But the biggest reason the Sarah <laughs> But the biggest reason the Saragaris did so well was they were in a fortified signal post, while the Afghans were just out in the open, ready to be shot. So the probability that the Sikhs bullets hit one of the Afghans was almost certain, but the probability that one of the Afghan bullets hit a Sikh was next to none. If you take 21 men and each of their bullets has a 95% chance of hitting an enemy and their enemy's bullets have just a 5% chance of hitting one of the men, then the 21 men could take on around 400 enemies. This is quite possible because the Sikhs were well-trained soldiers, but the Afghans were just untrained tribesmen. In modern times, mathematicians assign a value to the variable alpha, which estimates how fragmented enemy forces are inside a country. They find that countries naturally align to the variable of alpha being 2.5. This is typical of a state of war. And what we really found was that alpha, if we think about it, is the organizational structure of the insurgency. Alpha is the distribution of the sizes of attacks, which is really the distribution of the group strengths carrying out the attacks. To run these simulations, we can recreate this using a process of group dynamics to explain the patterns that we see all around the conflicts around the world. It's interesting how something as chaotic and random as war can be predicted by this simple equation. It's safe to say the Afghans aren't the biggest fans of mathematics. Click this video if you want to see more. What are you doing here? Go on.